Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Urban Gardener. I wanna thank you all so much for joining me here today. Now if you haven't already, please get right down below and hit that subscribe button and follow along with more garden adventures. In fact, right next to the subscribe button is a bell notification. Now if you hit that, you'll be notified of upcoming episodes as they come out. Today, we're gonna to be doing part two of our summer garden tour. In fact, this is gonna be the second time I've gone out to film footage for this part of the tour because we've lost our main filming camera and all the footage that went along with it that I filmed earlier this week. So uh, I'm gonna put a link right up above here so you can check out a video that's on my vlog channel, Enoch Vlogs, where I kind of talk about our camera situation. Now I encourage you to stay until the end of the video where I'm gonna do a taste test of our mystery peppers that are growing on the back patio area. I had a cross of some sort that uh, grew up as a volunteer out of one of our five gallon wicking buckets and I'm gonna go ahead and taste test those and see uh, if it's really hot or not. Not too sure what we're gonna get because it's cross between something. So stick with us here till the end of the video where I'll taste test that pepper. get this part two of our garden tour started. I'm gonna focus on tomatoes and peppers on this tour. Well, we got a few other things growing as well. And as you can see here, we've got black cherry tomatoes growing out of our five gallon buckets. And these are volunteers. I let volunteers grow pretty much in all of this area here and on the other side of the fence there as well. We got some, I'll show you in a minute. But um, I just let the most ripe tomatoes fall, a few of them into these buckets by the end of the season. And next year, they'll sprout out. And um, I pick the uh, most centered and strongest looking start in the buckets there and let them grow out. Plants aren't very big this year. They're usually coming out of the top of those cages there, but as you can see, we're getting plenty of fruits off of this one here. And these black cherry tomatoes are really, really delicious. And uh, we ended up with a volunteer that's uh, come out of the gravel here as well. And uh, so I just kind of let it go and as you can see it's producing fruit now which is uh, starting to ripen up seeing so a little coleus that we put in there and over here you can see we have a couple more volunteers these would be a uh, seed that basically has uh, washed from the other side of the fence there and has kind of washed into this growing space here and um, these plants only just came up actually maybe about a month ago and uh, don't expect them to really get too big or anything as the season is pretty far in right now too so but I see a bunch of different flowers on these plants and we'll see if we get uh, some fruits coming off of them here real soon and uh, it looks like another one of those uh, black cherry tomatoes as well has come up in this space right here so let's go around here, head off into our back patio area. So on this side here, which I showed you in part one of our garden tour this year, we have another volunteer space, as I was just describing on the other side of the fence here, where we let um, Prax Cherry Tomatoes volunteer up in this space every single year. Same with the uh, Black Cherry Tomatoes. Our plants are not that big, 
but are starting to really produce some fruit. We've got some really good ripe ones down in here right now. We'll have to harvest some of those up here after I get done with the tour. But this is uh, one of my favorite tomatoes ever though. Just really glad that I got this uh, variety from uh, Ray Browning over at Praxis 55712. I'll put a link right there at the top of the screen for his channel right there. and go check out what he's got growing on. Hey everyone, thank you for watching this video. I just have to interrupt for just one moment and let you know about a new project that I have launched. It's called Enoch Vlogs. I'll put a link right down in the description or you can click this i-card right here and it'll take you over to my new channel. It's going to be just a little bit more of a personal outlet for me here on YouTube. I'll still be doing the Urban Gardener and putting out gardening videos. I just hope that you'll join me on my new vlogs. And now back to our video. Back on our back patio area here, right along some of these uh, above ground raised beds that we built out, we've got some of our five gallon water wicking buckets, which uh, this year I have planted out some peppers and put them right alongside there, except for actually these first two in these buckets here. Um, I had a couple of volunteers that popped up from last year's pepper grow and got some sort of cross between two of our varieties and I'm not exactly sure what we ended up with. There's a couple of different varieties I have in mind, just not too sure, we're going to have to get in and check them out and give them a taste test which is what I'll do here at the end of the video. I'll take one of these peppers off of this plant, break it open and give it a taste, and see if uh, we can kind of figure out the different peppers that cross together to form these. I don't know if you have anything in mind or you're thinking of, let me know down in the comments section. But uh, very interesting uh, pepper pods. Kind of really interested in find out, though I'm not too sure. I want to find out that they are a uh, super hot of some sort. These ones here got a uh, similar color. They're just not as dark as the ones next to it there. But uh, putting off, you know, several pods here. So uh, again, we'll give it a shot and see what we got there. Right next to it, we've got. Uh, pepper variety I love to grow every single year and this one is the super heavyweight it's a uh, big bell pepper this one here is just actually getting going actually it'll probably get twice as big as that really delicious bell pepper I really like growing that one every single year next to it we've got another one of the same variety it's putting off a few different pods there. We've got a new one right up on top here coming out. Still got a bunch of uh, new leaves. So I'm sure that uh, we'll get some new growth and some new flowers here real soon. But some of our other peppers are not doing as well this year. This one here, I've got seed from one of our viewers, Nancy. And she sent us this uh, Chinese five color. And this plant has not been wanting to do very well, but it did put off a few pods, which you can tell are all ripened right now. They go through five different color stages to get to the red that they're at now. But, uh, you know, this plant just didn't do too well. We'll see, though. Again, there's new growth on there. So we'll see if anything comes out in the next couple of months or not. Now over here got a variety called the Golden Marconi and you can see it's got one nice ripe golden pod on there well, I think it's a little more of an orange than a gold but uh, yeah, that thing is just perfectly ripe and ready to be taken off the plant probably do that here just a little bit later 
Got another pod right here coming off the plant there. And right next to it, we've got another Marconi variety, and this one's a red Marconi. It's got a few pods on it, just getting started there. Here's one that's just forming right now. So, uh, yeah, this one should be doing pretty good. Got a few more flowers forming on there as well. So, we'll look to some more production off of that. Right up this ladder with all of our runner beans up onto the rooftop of our carport here. I've got five of our water wicking five gallon buckets planted out a few of our pepper varieties. Now the problem here was, as we saw the video, a few videos back on our peppers, um, I planted these out just basically right from indoors, right outdoors. I didn't harden them off at all. And uh, they really paid the price for it. They got really sunburnt and sun scorched. And um, I almost had to just replace them with new plants, but they did start to put off new growth. And they're starting to get really green right now as you can see here the one on the over here is actually starting to uh, produce uh, a bunch of peppers the other one's got a few different uh, pods on them but not very much but uh, hopefully soon here some of those flowers on those plants will produce some pods and we'll get to check them out they're mostly really hot varieties i think i've got a chocolate habanero there's a red super hot of some sort a yellow maruga scorpion and this one here is a scotch bonnet and this one's here is our one and only sweet pepper variety the dos dos landes which uh, has quite a few peppers on it as you can see So one of the other things we've got growing here on our back patio, and I've got a few others here I'll show you in just a minute or two. And this one seems to be the one that looks the best out of all of them, um, other than it hasn't formed any fruits yet. But we've got some really, really nice eggplant flowers that are forming off of this plant right now. So here any day now, those flowers will turn into some eggplant fruits. And here in just a moment, I'll show you some that are forming right now in another part of our garden. So right across the way from the carport, I live along this alleyway right here. And um, behind my neighbor's house here, we grow some uh, container potatoes. These containers here have a Kennebec variety of uh, potato. And um, plants are pretty much done and ready here soon to be harvested. So I'm going to pull out the potatoes from these containers and we'll do that up in our next video so if you keep an eye out for our next video uh, we'll see what we get out of these things here um, you can see this container here it's got uh, damage to it and everything uh, I'll put a iCard right up there it's popping up right now and that iCard will lead you to a video on my vlogs where I show what happened to this container here and uh, you can let me know in the comments on that video what you think about that and right here, like I said, right along the fence line of my neighbors here, we've planted out uh, some different varieties here. We've got tomatoes. And um, these tomatoes here um, haven't done very well. The plants were really, really bad off about uh, three, four weeks ago. And um, just really started putting off a lot of new growth and uh, lots of flowers. So I'm starting to see fruit forming and uh, coming up on this plant finally. It hasn't done anything up to this point, but uh, kind of hopeful. As I said too, is some of our plants are doing really well and some plants not so well at all. Next to that is another one of our eggplants. You see here, some of the flowers are starting to turn over and uh, form some fruits. So this one here is just starting to close up so hopefully been all pollinated and we'll see some fruits off of that soon and we've got over here we've got 
pepper variety. This one here is a uh, kind of like a mini bell purple, uh, purple beauty. And um, these bells are probably just a little bit smaller than what they usually are, but they're not very big ultimately, as I've seen. But uh, lots and lots of pods coming off of this plant. As you can see, we got some flowers and a uh, new pod forming right there. And next to that one there, we've got this variety, which is a uh, purple Serrano variety. And um, I don't know, this is one of those ones where I think because I'm living on an alleyway, somebody came along, maybe even dumped something on it or did something to it, where it's just really, really damaged the plant really, really bad, and which is really kind of hindering it from uh, producing much, even though yeah, that one's pretty. That's that's not really a, any good at all. But uh, it's got some more flowers and fruits forming there on it. So we'll see. Peppers are really, really resilient. And uh, they'll just uh, get growing in their own due time, too. Right next to it, we've got a Serrano. Uh, no, this one here is a Golden Cayenne golden cayenne and just producing tons and tons of fruits all over the plant and this one here I'll probably uh, harvest up all of those peppers and make a uh, powder out of it nice cayenne cooking powder and here's another eggplant and really love these eggplant leaves There's some really new growth right here coming out but it's just so soft and and they get really big and really really nice love the leaves on the eggplants this one here has got some uh, flowers that you know, it looks like they're just dropping off so not getting any production at all off of this plant and the flowers are dropping as you see but if you look at this one here look at all these flowers we got a bunch of flowers on here this one's nice and open right there yeah, and as you can see, we got a fruit that's forming right there. So that is really nice to see. And I'll look, if I look here up underneath of that leaf, there's actually a fruit on that one there. So it's losing flowers and all of that, but we do got one fruit on it. All right, that's a nice surprise. But this one, we should be seeing a bunch of bunch of fruits here real soon forming on that one there. And over here, we've got a, um, this is a, I want, it's a, not a tomatillo, but a um, ground cherry. Ground cherries form uh, their fruits like a tomatillo will with these uh, shells on them. And uh, this thing will really produce a lot too once it gets producing you can see all the way up here there's just a bunch of different little fruits forming on this all over but they're really cool let's see if we can't get into this one here there we go inside of that shell is a little fruit and that fruit will uh grow and ripen into a nice yellow has this kind of like um, almost pineapple-y type taste to it. Really delicious. I really like these ground cherries. So those plants over here aren't doing too bad. As I said, we live on these alleyways. We've got this alleyway here, which I showed you in our last uh, summer tour about our corn. So quick update on the corn that we're growing back here. Now, if you saw my last uh, garden tour, we did an update. You could also check out the video where we planted out these corn starts. We planted corn starts this year as opposed to corn seed because I couldn't get a hold of any seed. But I uh, wasn't holding out any hope for any of these plants. But yet, lo and behold, since I filmed the first part of our tour, some ears have formed on these plants. Now they're just really, really small. I mean, these are tiny little ears. Silks are out though. 
pollen is dropping off of the plants. So maybe they'll ripen up just a little bit. In fact, take a look at this one here. And it's a corn ear just growing straight out of the top of the plant. In fact, it looks like it's even splitting or something, which is interesting. I don't know, never seen that sort of thing before. But uh, yeah, just real poor results from those plant starts this year. We'll go back to doing seed again next year. Take a look at this here. We got uh, a spaghetti squash here growing from the other side of the fence there where we've got some uh, squash plants planted over there. And uh, another one kind of climbing up over the fence climbing up these uh, sunflowers I've got as you can see uh, really tall really nice these ones are already starting to hunker over uh, which kind of tells me that this is about as big as they're gonna get and they're pretty good size uh, sunflower heads on there but I was really expecting these really large Russian mammoth uh, sunflower heads so probably try a different variety of seed next year um, but uh, still pretty good size I'm sure we'll get some decent seed out of them and again that one over there too is hunkering over so that's usually about a sign that these uh, flowers are pretty much done and they'll start to have all their petals fall off and uh, dry out and then come all the birds after all of the bees have their way with all of the pollen and the little flowers that are basically on each one of those seeds. It's got a little flower on it. So those bees will go crazy on that for a while. And down here too, as you can see, we've got, look here, this vine right here coming out from the other side of the fence there. Really kind of coming right out here heading right into the alleyway. These things are just really stretching and going all over the place. And if you can tell there, if anybody knows, these are uh, sweet potato vine, which I've got planted on the other side of the fence there. And then this here, another squash variety. You know, on the other side of the fence, you'll see in a little bit, they don't look all too well some of the squash varieties but they get across onto this other side and they really start doing well and you can see right down here this is a butternut variety we got a nice uh, butternut squash there pretty nice a little flower that's still open too but yeah Still got some things kind of growing and doing all right back here, but uh, better luck next time on that corn. And just on the other side of the fence here, and along it here, going back into this space here, we're growing all sorts of different varieties of tomatoes. And back there, we've got some peppers. But right up front here, take a look, we got a nice big pumpkin. That thing's really starting to get large. Might have a little bit more growth to go here real soon. We'll take it off of the plant. Same with this one right over here too. We got another really good sized pumpkin. Ended up with two really good fruits off of this plant this year. I just think it looks really cool as people are driving by and getting to see these pumpkins and all of this stuff growing right along an alleyway. You know, we're getting a lot of this stuff just growing right along our alleyway spaces and spaces most people wouldn't actually use or think of using even. Let's get into some of these tomato varieties. We got over here a San Marzano. And it's just starting to ripen up and still producing a bunch of different fruits all over the plant. Lots and lots of flowers on there. 
And right next to it, we got another one that's really producing a lot of tomatoes. And right down at the bottom here, there's a few that are starting to ripen up. This one here is called the black icicle. That actually, if you see here, it's growing right over the fence line and through the fence line. So I'm sure on the other side there, we'll be getting some fruits coming off of the plant from there too as well. Right down below it though, we've got this uh, zucchini. Big, big plant. We've got a couple of uh, nice size fruits here that I'm gonna have to take off before they get too big. But uh, yeah, I've already taken off a good uh, three or four off of the plant already. So this one's been a real big producer this year and uh, seen some uh, new flowers and whatnot closing up down there as well. So should be some more fruits coming up too real soon. And some more tomato varieties here. We've got some right down on the bottom. We got a few good fruits off of this one here called the Orange Kentucky. So these will get a bit bigger and should turn into a nice orange color. So I'm really looking forward to these ones here. It's still lots of new growth coming up and it's starting to head towards the other side of the fence there as well. <laughs> now in between here and along the way, We've planted out different like cantaloupes and watermelon and squash and different things along the way. Now our melons aren't doing very well or producing at all, I don't think. But uh, this one here actually, as you saw there just a minute ago when we were showing you the corn, is the one where uh, the cantaloupe's going through the fence line there. And that's this plant right here. But uh, we'll see. You never know, I don't expect much out of it for this year. And here we got one that's got a bunch of nice ripe red fruits on it. Not very big, but uh, we've got a bunch of them on there. So this one's really doing some great producing. Lots of new, lots of new fruits on there. And again, it's growing right up there with a lot of new growth. So hopefully, here in a few weeks this one will be really producing but we already got some good fruits already and this one here is kind of sprawling out a bit and uh, trying to get itself through the fence over there so <laughs> but uh, it's definitely uh, climbing up and over as well we've got a variety called the Jersey Giant now I don't know about this one very well because I've never seen a fruit that's grown in the shape that these are growing in. I mean, that is a pretty odd shape for a tomato. Yeah, and uh, you can see here, there's a couple more inside of here. One of them that's uh, starting to ripen up. But yeah, this really odd shape. <laughs> so, I don't know, we'll see how they taste though. The shape doesn't matter, ultimately, the, shape, the uh, taste does. <laughs> and uh, this one here is a super steak variety. Should be a really nice beef steak. But this plant hasn't produced anything uh, down below at all. But we've got some good growth, new growth that's coming up. And uh, did start to produce this one fruit right here. Yep. That's pretty much all I've seen so far on this plant. Again, weather cools down a little bit. A lot of these flowers will stop uh, falling off of the plant and uh, start forming fruits, hopefully. And right here's another one of our poor plants this year that's just not doing too well. Oh, the Oregon Spring, named after my state, Oregon. But uh, it sure ain't doing very well in Oregon this year. We do got a few nice small fruits that have formed on it. A couple that are uh, still ripening up. There is a flower though right there. And some new growth. So possibly some more coming up here as well. Just not too sure. Well, right next to that one there, which is 
you can't even tell there's a tomato plant hardly here except for some of the growth that's uh, coming up out of the top of the plant there but uh, it's got this uh, spaghetti squash that's just grown and vined up all over it but um, this one here is a Volkoff. Now, Volkoff was one that I grew last year and I really liked because it had these big fruits on it. And this year, just not seeing it. You know, who knows? Maybe it's because it's getting really shaded out because it's all covered by this uh, squash plant. But uh, maybe we'll see some uh, new fruits coming out here real soon from the top. But uh, squash is producing. And a nice one there. And as you saw from the other side there, when I was showing the corn, we got, uh, there's another fruit, squash fruit, hanging right off of a squash vine, growing right up from uh, this uh, sunflower. The sunflowers are just really growing really, really tall. We're looking at maybe 12 to 14 feet there. But uh, just not getting the... Uh, Flower heads, like I said, kind of wish that they were really big, like I was uh, hoping for. I'll just have to give it another shot next year, though, and get a different seed and see what we can come up with then. All right, between these sunflowers, as you can see, we've got this plant here, which is called uh, a, well, it's just a pineapple I got from uh, Territorial Seed pineapple variety so it has should have a nice uh, kind of yellowish reddish look to it when it gets ripened up but uh, it's just starting now to produce some fruits we've got a few in there so I'm really looking forward to uh, this one here other side of that sunflower another plant that's just kind of starting to produce but not very big as this one you can see it hasn't even hasn't even gotten up past the top ring on that uh, tomato cage there so just not getting very good growth out of it we'll see what we get when we get these fruits there and this one here is a yellow oh this was the uh, yellow union that I call it union yellow because I got this variety from a uh, tomato that was growing in the Union Community Garden, the Union Park Community Garden. So, um, and I've saved the seeds, I haven't grown it uh, for a couple of years, so I thought I'd give it another shot this year. It's not doing too well. I'm back underneath a couple of these sunflowers, as I showed just a little bit ago, the vines on the other side of the fence of this sweet potato plant here we've got growing in this storage container here big storage container I had a uh, sweet potato that was given to me by a friend and uh, had a few slips on it so I got them all rooted up planted them out in this uh, container and uh, it's just taken off all over the place as you can see it's vining out up through here all along the front here. Look at this. Just stretching all the way out. Looks like it wants to get itself caught up onto this wall over here and it probably will. <laughs> but uh, right here is uh, this uh, thing I built here for these uh, five gallon water wicking buckets. Just a cool thing to kind of keep them all together and up off of the ground. The last year or so I've been growing them just right here in this space on the lawn and it just gets really untidy and doesn't look very well so now we've got them all in one good space and uh, real quick here I'll show you we used to grow our peppers right up here I'll put an i-card right up right now for a video which will show you some of our rooftop gardening we used to do right up on the carport but you did see that we put uh, five containers right up on the very edge, but we used to grow a whole bunch of them right up there on that carport. But now we got them here in this nice contraption I built up here from uh, something that I saw on one of the gardening groups, and I thought it was really great. 
The one thing I would do differently though, and I might still do it for next year, is kind of raise this back side up and make it tiered up so that this back side is kind of up higher than the plants in the front so that they're just getting a little bit more sun access later in the day as the sun uh, sets back this way. So they're kind of shaded right at the moment, but here in just a few minutes or so, the sun is gonna get all over them as it'll be direct sun until sunset. Now, the first few here, we've got the same variety growing, uh, more of that uh, super heavyweight variety that I showed you on the back patio there. And it's really just starting to set some fruits. Got some back here. This one's actually starting to ripen up, so it might not get much bigger than that there but we got some new fruits forming we got some more flowers so we're looking forward to some more on this plant and this one here has just got a bunch a bunch of fruits forming all over in here just starting to size up too so yeah again more flowers so there should be some more production coming up here soon not only about getting it tiered up too, I'd have a better angle at getting you guys some uh, video of these ones in the back, but uh, we'll do the best we can here. This here is our uh, Dos Deslandes variety, and that's another one like the super heavyweight here that I really like to grow every year because these are just delicious. They're going to ripen up into a nice bright red color, and when they're ripe, they're one of the sweetest peppers you'll ever eat. I just love these. They're great for just snacking right off of the plant. Some of them grow in some funky, curvy shapes, but uh, it's one of the things I like about growing peppers is the uniqueness of uh, all the different varieties. And the same right up here up front, we've got some that are actually turning that nice red color, like I was saying. So this one here be just about ready to pull off the plant and eat there. But when it starts producing, these things just really start putting off a lot of pods. So we'll be expecting a bunch more off of this as well. Now here's a variety that is not doing very well. Um, plants are growing pretty good. we still got some more growth coming up off of them. But ideally, I would like my plants to be kind of up and over the top of this cage here. And I would like some of the fruits to be just a bit larger than what we're getting on this one here. Uh, this is uh, called the Ajvarsky. And some of the actual peppers I've seen other people grow are just a little bit more larger than what I've got here. And again, it's the same variety here in the back. And we've got a few fruits that are forming up on it. Now, here is some more of that variety we saw on the back patio called the um, uh, Marconis. This one here is the red Marconi. And then right up in the front here, another one of our golden Marconis, which are really starting to ripen up at this point here. Looks like we got another one we can take off of the plant here real soon. And right next to that, this one here, another one that isn't growing very, very well. All right, here, let's do it again. Okay, let's go. And right next to those Marconis, we've got another one I don't feel is growing very well. And obviously you can tell this one is barely just reaching up over the second ring on this one here. So this plant is not, getting very big and nor is it producing very big these are supposed to be a really large yellow monster variety of bell pepper here and um, just you know decent little pods there and I'm sure they're gonna taste really nice just not the size that I'm looking for that's kind of a similar thing here with the one right next to it too Although this is usually a pretty compact plant that produces just hundreds of pods. This is the one called the Pusa Juala. 
We've got some that are starting to ripen up, but lots and lots and lots of flowers on here. So this plant will produce a lot more here coming up. Right behind that yellow monster is a variety that's called the New Mix Big Jim. Same issue here, just not getting very big pods for a plant that's called Big Jim. <laughs> so I don't know, this one's really kind of twisted and funky looking. But uh, I don't know, we'll see as we go. I'm sure they'll taste fine, just not very big. Now, one of the ones on the back patio that I was having some real struggle, I told you I'd show you here, is this one here called the Tequila Sunrise. Now, ultimately, this plant isn't doing as well as it could before. Last year, I grew this variety and had just a really nice big plant, but we are getting lots of nice fruit growing off of this. So, we're getting some really good production. The pods are looking about the size I'm looking for. Just the plant itself isn't that big. So also down here between the sunflowers and the tomato buckets, I did plant out a few of our uh, scraggly peppers from the varieties that I had this year. Now this one's kind of producing a little bit. It's got a couple of fruits on there. But I think being hidden down in here and shaded out most of the day isn't doing it too well. Another one right here though, got a really nice size fruit on it. Look at that sucker. That's a big one right there. Another one of the super heavyweight varieties there. So there we go. We got our summer garden tour all finished up for the year. And just like 2020, we've got a real mixed bag of results from all of our peppers and tomato plants that we've got growing there. Hopefully, as I said, the weather will cool down here real soon and we'll start to see some more production out of those plants and still potentially get some really great harvests. That's one of the things I did kind of want to address here real quick too is I see on uh, gardening groups and social media out there a lot of people who are just in their first year of growing their gardens and really discouraged by the results that they're getting. Now just remember, this is your first year. If you saw what I was growing and how things turned out for me in my first year, you'd understand I had a lot to learn still. And that's exactly what we got to do. If we're not seeing the results or we're not getting what we're looking for from our garden, take it as a learning experience and apply those things that you learned to next year's garden don't give up so all right now on to what i promised earlier in the video a pepper taste test now i've never done a pepper taste test before and i'm not too keen on super hot peppers but i love growing the plants as you saw earlier here in the tour on the back patio space We've got a couple of volunteer pepper plants that came up out of our five gallon wicked buckets. And I'm not sure exactly what kind of pepper we ended up with, but it's a cross of some sort. Now we can tell by looking at the pepper itself that um, it's got this dark color to it. Last year I only grew two peppers that had this sort of color. Now one of them was a purple bell pepper called Purple Beauty and the other was a hot chocolate habanero. And the shape of this pepper also makes me think there's possibly a poblano involved as well. So I don't know what we're gonna get or what it's gonna taste like, but we're only gonna be able to find out once we get into it. So um, let's get, let's check it out. I'm gonna break it open here first. Ooh, oh yeah. It's definitely got some spice to it. 
smells really, really good, but let's give it a taste and see what we got. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a hot one. I'm definitely leaning towards the uh, chocolate habanero there for sure. So possibly a chocolate habanero and our poblano pepper. Woo, yeah. <laughs> That's a hot pepper, all right. <laughs> yeah, and it's just gaining heat. Definitely right there on the back of the throat. Definitely starting to feel some around the eyes. <laughs> and I say I'm not a, not a real big fan of really, really hot peppers, but uh, This one is uh, definitely up there in that range that I don't really, don't really mess around with there that much. <laughs> Whew, yeah. <laughs> what did I get myself into? <laughs> all right, though. Anyways, um, I really want to thank you all so much for joining me here on this garden tour and. Um, taste in this video I sure hope that you give this video <laughs> really want to thank you all so much for joining me here on this summer garden tour and if you uh, like this video please give it a big big thumbs up for uh, trying out this really really hot pepper it's that's burning up it's really burning up and if you could, please get down to the comment section below and let me know what you think of the videos. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or anything at all, or any suggestions, I'd love to hear from you all. And as I always say, make sure you get down there and hit that subscribe button. Follow along with more garden adventures here on The Urban Gardener. And I'll see you all on the very next episode. Oh, man. Oh, boy. for uh, growing in an alleyway and um, yeah we're gonna do that over again <laughs> all so much for joining along with me here in fact if you haven't in fact got a couple of small heads here um, no. again we'll do it again subscribe button and follow along with more garden adventures in fact hit the bell no and I'm not too sure exactly which ones it is, but um, I'm gonna... Now I encourage you to stick with... Um, that variety there though is another variety I got from Ray Browning's Praxis 557217, 517, 5712 channel. And uh, 